All right, guys, today we are going to go over lesson 11.1, uh, starting a new chapter today called Simplifying Radicals. Uh, what we're going to use today is a method to simplify things like the square root of 48 without giving a decimal. All right, and right now we don't have a method for doing that, but in a minute you will. All right, so let's start off with some basic stuff. Um, take a look at all these. Um, simplifying radicals is really just the process by which we write radical expressions into their simplest form. So we're computing square roots, right? But sometimes we can't compute square roots of things like that. However, if we look at these, these are pretty simple. The square root of 36, well, that's just 6. The square root of 16 is just 4. Remember, these can be plus or minus, plus or minus. And the square root of 144 is 12, all right? These are all easy because they are all perfect squares. And what that means is, we talked about this before, is that I can take 6 times 6 to get 36. I can take 4 times 4 to get 16. When I square root 36, I get 2 whole number answers. I get two whole number answers when I square root 16, two whole number answers when I get uh, the square root of 144. So those are all perfect squares. Um, perfect squares are a number whose square root is a whole number, and we can list what all the perfect squares are, right? So the first perfect square is going to be 1. The next one after that is going to be 4, and then 9, and then 25, and then 36, and then 49. Um, how am I getting these, Art, you ask? Well, all I'm doing is taking 1 times 1, 2 times 2, 3 times 3, uh, I forgot 16 in there, 4 times 4, 5 times 5, 6 times 6, 7 times 7, and so on. Okay, That's how we come up with all the perfect squares. Knowing these, knowing these perfect squares is muy importante. You must know these in order for the lesson to work for today. All right. So if you're weak on that, that's something you need to practice. All right, moving on here. Now we're going to try to simplify things that we don't know. If I take the square root of 12, actually, if I do that on my calculator right now, because I got one next to me here, um, the square root of 12 is a decimal. It's like 3.46, right? But the directions in the beginning of the lesson said that we're going to do this without decimal values. Well, how do we do that? The square root of 27 will also give me a decimal answer. Well, we're going to use this theorem here. We're going to use this idea that if I have a times b underneath a radical, I can split that up into the square root of a times the square root of b. All right? And this a times b right here is kind of disguised in 12, meaning I can break 12 into two factors, a and b, that multiply to 12. And then I can separate them into the different square roots. All right? So what we're going to do is we're going to look for the perfect square factors of a number underneath the radical. The largest perfect square that goes into 4 is the largest perfect square that goes into 27. We're going to look for those, and we're going to see what happens. Okay, So let's employ this idea here. I'm going to break, in, break the square root of 12 down into uh, the largest perfect square that goes into 12 is 4, and then I would take that times 3, right? So I'm going to break this into the square root of 4 times the square root of 3. So splitting the square root. But now if you notice, the square root of 4 is 2. 2 root 3. I can no longer break down the square root of 3. That's my final answer. And if you take 2 times the square root of 3 and the square root of 12, you will get the same decimal answer. Only this one is more simplified. What about the square root of 27? What is the largest perfect square that goes into 27. Well, the largest one that I can think of is 9. So I'm going to break this into the square root of 9, and it's 9 times 3 to give me 27. Well, what's the square root of 9? Well, that's 3. 3 times the square root of 3, which is left, is our final answer. So we're breaking them down into the largest perfect square and its other factor, and then we're just computing the perfect square for our final answer. A couple of things. How do I know when I'm done simplifying? Well, right now we're just going to practice on A, and, and Monday we're going to work at we're going to look at this. But right now I want you to focus on um, two things. When <clears throat> the number underneath the radical is one, not a perfect square itself. Okay, so the number underneath the radical is not a perfect square, 
and it has no perfect square factors in it. So in both these cases, the number underneath the radical is not a perfect square and no perfect square factors in it. So we're done. All right. So let's try some examples. Square root of 18. Again, think of the largest perfect square that goes into 18. Well, 9 goes into 18. That's a perfect square. And that gets paired with 2. 9 times 2 is 18. So now the, per the square root of 9 is 3. And I'm left with the square root of 2 at the end. Oops, I'm easy. I'm left with the square root of 2. Okay. And that is my final answer. All right. Square root of 48. Uh, the largest perfect square that goes into 48 is 16. Square root of 16. 16 times what gives me 48? 3. What's the square root of 16? 4. So I'm left with 4 root of 3. And that is my final answer. I know I'm done because in both cases, these are not perfect squares. And uh, there are no perfect square factors in them. All right. What about 56? Well, the biggest perfect square I can think of that goes in there is 4. And it's the square root of 4 times the square root of 14. 4 times 14 gives me 56. And so I'm left with 2 square root of 14. Okay. All right. Let's take a step back for a second. Let's say that I didn't know what the biggest perfect square was. Let's look at just this one. Let's say I didn't know what the largest perfect square was that went in the 48. Okay. Let's say all I knew was, oh, well, it's 4. Well, then I would separate that into 4 and 12, right? Well, 4 and 12, that would give me 2 square root of 12. But then if I look at the square root of 12, 4 also goes into 12. So then what I would have to do is drag down this 2 and split 12 into the square root of 4 and then the square root of 3. The square root of 4 is also 2. So I got 2 times 2 times the square root of 3, which is also 4 square root of 3. And if we go back in time, that's the same answer we had before. So which one would you rather do? This one or that one? I would prefer the first. Okay, But if you don't catch the largest perfect square, no sweat, you can still do the second one. All right, uh, multiplication properties. Remember, I can do multiplication in any order I want. So if I give you a problem that looks like this, that means I can take the 2 and the 3 and put them together. And I can take the square root of 10 and the square root of 2 and put them together. But then I can take those and work backwards in that property and say that the square root of 10 times the square root of 2 is the square root of 20. Okay? So, and also this is going to be the square root of, or I'm sorry, 6. So these things here give me 6 times the square root of 20, and I can work with that. So... Um, I guess I already did that. I can rewrite this as 6 times the square root of 20, right? And I can simplify that even more. Do I have that on the next page? No, I don't. Okay. So we're going to look with, we're going to work with this, all right? 6 square root of 20. So all I did was combine some things that I had, and now I have 6 times the square root of 20. Well, 4 goes into 20, so I have 6 times the square root of 4 times the square root of 4 times 5 gives me 20. Square root of 4 is 2. 6 times 2 times the square root of 5. 6 times 2 is 12. So my final answer is 12 root 5. All right? And all we're doing is rearranging the problem. Let's look at some more examples. Okay? Again, pause the video at any time if you need to. Um, all right, I'm going to do the same thing. 2 and 7 can be multiplied to give me 14. Okay? And then 5 and 20 can multiply to give me 100. So I have the square root of 100. Well, I notice that the square root of 100 is really 10. So I have 14 times 10, which gives me 140. That's my final answer. Okay. Same thing here. Combine 4 and 5. 4 times 5 gives me 20. And then combine 3 and 15. 3 times 15 gives me the square root of 45. Okay? So now I'm going to break down the square root of 45. 9 goes into 45, so I have 20 times the square root of 9 times the square root of 5. And then 20, I'm sorry, square root of 9 is broken down into 3. 20 times 3 times the square root of 5. 2 times 3 gives me 60 times the square root of 5. All right? Moving on to the last one here. This is my final answer. 4 times 3 gives me 12. 
and 2 times 6 gives me 18. Well, 18 we've already done before. The biggest perfect square that goes into 18 is 9. So I have 12 times the square root of 9 times the square root of 9 times 2 gives me 18. And square root of 9 is 3, so I have 12 times 3 times the square root of 2. 12 times 3 is 36, so I have 36 times the square root of 2. And that's our final answer. All right, those are the only problems that I want you to focus on for today. And tomorrow what we're going to do is learn what we do when we divide radicals, or I should say Monday. All right, uh, homework is on the board behind you. Actually, it's a worksheet today, so the sub is going to hand out a worksheet. If you need to go back and review any part of this video, it is on my website. So if you have a device, you can view it on there or uh, have the sub play it again at any point uh, at any time. I hope you guys have a great weekend. I will see you again on Monday.